an aircraft born from the idea of creating a business jet with a spacious cabin. An idea that has endured numerous challenges and changes, ultimately yielding something astonishingly beautiful. Hello Aviator Sky here, and today we'll be exploring how a mid-sized French business jet has grown to compete with the flagships of business aviation. Introducing the Dassault Falcon 6X. The history of the brand new 6X model began a surprisingly long time ago and is connected to the 5X project. A very difficult project. The Falcon 5X first appeared in Dassault's blueprints back in 2006 as part of the SMS Super Midsize program. It was intended to replace the aging Falcon 50 and compete with midsize aircraft like the Bombardier Challenger 300 and Embraer Legacy 600. The Falcon 5X advantages over its competitors were supposed to be a slightly longer range, new engines and, most importantly, an increased fuselage diameter, providing more width and height in the cabin, more space and comfort for passengers. The technology was planned to be largely carried over from the latest, larger model, the Falcon 7X. The increased fuselage diameter would be compensated by advanced airframe aerodynamics, incorporating both the 7X design and the experience of colleagues from Dassault's military division. The Rafale is arguably one of the most sculpted fighters in its generation. The advanced Rolls-Royce RB282 engines were planned to be installed in the tail, two of them. They decided against a trijet. The project was very promising, but problems arose from nowhere. The 2008 global financial crisis hit business aviation hard, and the hardest hit came to the niche of the 5X model. At the time, the project was still in the design phase, and the so, thinking fast, made adjustments, slightly pushing it into a more distant niche. The updated Falcon 5X was officially unveiled in 2013 at the NBAA show in Las Vegas. The aircraft became larger, heavier and had a longer range of 5200 miles. The power plant was also upgraded. Instead of Rolls-Royce engines, they were to be replaced by Snecma's Silvercrest engines, the project for even more advanced motors. And the problem was in that stipulation, the project. Silvercrest had a very difficult development, with deadlines constantly shifting, pushing back the aircraft delivery schedule as well. Although the 5X flew in 2017, many power plant issues remained unresolved, which at one point effectively halted all work. The situation damaged the soul's image, and the 5X was discredited. Existing orders began to be cancelled. Ultimately, the company couldn't take it anymore and cancelled the project. And so, it's 2017. The Dassault team looks at the sitting by the fence 5X, which they've been struggling with for a decade, and decides that the plane is actually fantastic. They just need to slightly update it to suit new conditions, solve technical problems and relaunch. Thus, in 2018, just a few months after the 5X project was closed, its soft reboot was announced, the Falcon 6X. The aircraft has been slightly redesigned once again. It's now 25.68 meters long, slightly longer than the 5X, 7.47 meters high, slightly lower than the 5X, the fin has been trimmed, and the wingspan has grown to 25.94 meters. The design has been optimized and the aspect ratio has been increased. Additionally, the wing now features flaperons, which act as both ailerons and flaps, which are very useful to maintain control, especially at low speeds. Oh, and for anyone upset by the loss of the Falcon's main feature, the trijet configuration, there is a consolation. The tail is still cruciform, with the stabilizer at the bottom of the fin rather than at the top, a hallmark of the French. The maximum takeoff weight reached 35.2 tons. Now it was not only heavier than the 5X, but also heavier than the 7X. Its fuel capacity was sufficient for a range of 5,500 miles, enough to fly from London to Los Angeles or Hong Kong. In other words, the airplane originally planned as a competitor to mid-sized jets was now going head-to-head -head with the almost top dogs, like the Gulfstream G500 and Bombardier Global 5500. 
Competition with the Falcon Brothers was avoided by upgrading the 7X and transforming it into the current 8X, which received a number of upgrades and increased its range to nearly 6,450 miles. It's now the longest range Falcon, at least until the arrival of the Big Daddy, the 10X model. Interestingly, the aircraft utilizes a nitrogen fuel pressurization system. An inert gas pumped into the tanks prevents the fuel from igniting in emergency situations. This technique isn't new, but it's primarily used in military aviation and launch rockets. For civilian aircraft, it's exotic. All of this is pulled by a new fiery hot, the brainchild of Pratt Whitney from the PW800 family, created for business jets and regional airliners. The engines incorporate the company's latest technologies, including those found in the larger PW-1000G engines used on long-haul airliners. A gearbox was left out. It's too much for small engines, sorry. And yes, the competition between the 6X and the G500 is even more exciting now. They share the same engines, just in different configurations. The Falcon's PW-812D variant is optimized for the plane. It's slightly smaller and lighter than its siblings, producing 13,500 pounds force of thrust. The Dassault Falcon 6X completed its rollout ceremony in December of 2020 and took off in March 2021. Four aircraft participated in the testing, three prototypes and one production aircraft, fully equipped with a cabin and all the necessary features. During the tests, they confirmed the stated performance characteristics, a service ceiling of 51,000 feet. That's right, civilian airliners, look and envy. A maximum speed of Mach 0.9, 516 knots or 956 kilometers per hour. Cruise speed is slightly lower, Mach 0.85. A minimum speed of 110 knots, 204 kilometers per hour, takeoff distance of approximately 1,560 meters and landing distance of 744 meters, more or less like its classmates. The test program was proceeding quite successfully, despite encountering difficulties of biological and political origin. The aircraft received EASA and FAA certification in the summer of 2023, and a couple of months later it was delivered to its first customers. At that time, each aircraft cost approximately $54 million. And when a client sees a price tag of $54 million, he asks, what do I get for this? The Falcon 6X can accommodate up to 16 passengers in its spacious cabin. What does that actually mean? This concept, born during the 5X project, has not only been preserved here, but taken to its peak. The cabin is 12.3 meters long relatively modest compared to larger jets, but its width is 2.58 meters and its height is a whopping 1.98 meters. Wow, an almost 2 meter ceiling in a business jet. This isn't just more than any other Falcon, including the 8X, it's more than any other business jet, including big boys like the Global 7500 and Gulfstream G700. Beyond that, only VIP airliners based on passenger jets can match. Adding 30 large windows plus one more in the galley ceiling, cool, and we get not just a lot of space but also a lot of light and therefore getting rid of the oppressive feeling of crampedness, which is an important factor for comfort in long flights. The cabin is divided into several zones. The first is the galley, not very large given the cabin's limited length but fully functional. There's also a small forward lavatory. Next comes the main passenger cabin. It can be configured in various ways according to customer preferences, but in its basic configuration it includes a forward club area with four seats arranged in pairs, a central conference area with four seats and a large table on the one side of the aisle and a credenza on the other. Further on behind the wall is a large lounge area with sofas and seats in the standard format and the sofa converts into a full-size bed for sleeping. By the way, some of the seats in the forward cabin can also be converted into beds, so not only the main passenger but also his companions can get a good night's sleep. Next, of course, is a lavatory, small but beautiful. The lavatory has another door that leads into the baggage compartment, located in the rear fuselage. The main access, of course, is from the outside, through a door near the engine. Interestingly, there are actually two baggage compartments. 
The second, small compartment is located behind the main one. They decided to utilize the space to its full potential, but it's not connected to the cabin and isn't pressurized. In fact, there is a slightly odd disproportion between the cabin's cross-section dimensions and its length. You get a feeling that if the fuselage were a bit longer, it could accommodate a lot more cool stuff. So the potential is clearly there, and adding an extra meter to the fuselage isn't exactly impossible. The issue here is more a matter of separating the niches within the Falcon model line. Nevertheless, while the aircraft's length was limited, the engineers and designers weren't at all modest when it came to its filling. The aircraft boasts some of the quietest engines in its class and cutting-edge soundproofing. The air conditioning system provides pressure equivalent to an altitude of 4,000 feet, while in reality you'll be flying at 41,000 feet, and it refreshes the air every few minutes, passing it through medical-grade HEPA filters. These figures may seem insignificant, but on long-haul flights, the quality of the air conditioning system can be more important than the interior design. On which they didn't skimp either. The metals, wood, leather and varnish are all top-notch. The same goes for other features, including intuitive lighting, cabin system controls and multimedia, with internet connection via both standard satellites and Starlink. And my main weakness in Falcon jets the carpets. They're incredibly soft. Basically, you can travel, relax and work. That's probably the most important thing. Let's see how it's all controlled. The Falcon 6X cockpit is quite similar to its siblings, the 7X and 8X, which were once a breakthrough in the Falcon lineup. It features wide glazing, side sticks, fly-by-wire, head-up displays and other amenities. All of this is accomplished using the EZ4 Avionics, developed by Dassault in collaboration with Honeywell on their Primus Epic platform, featuring large displays, electronic flight pads and a digital flight control system, which is largely responsible for the jet's agility in flight. Plus, a mandatory feature of the new models is the Falcon Eye system, which provides multispectral optics and synthetic vision, allowing the aircraft to fly confidently in virtually any weather, even in zero visibility, another legacy of the Rafale fighter's advanced electronics. Together, these properties make the Falcon 6X not only comfortable for passengers, but also a joy to pilot. Another feature of the French jets that needed to be preserved, even while abandoning the three-engine design. Deliveries, which began in 2023, were initially quite modest. Customers were getting to know the new aircraft and awaiting confirmation on its special capabilities. For example, performing steep takeoffs and landings at airports like London City Airport, with its very stringent requirements as well as operating in hot and high conditions. The 6X tested its capability at La Paz Airport in Bolivia, located at an altitude of over 4 kilometers above sea level. Falcons are distinguished by their ability to fly to exotic locations, where many others are denied access. By the end of 2025, according to various sources, Dassault had delivered approximately 20 Falcon 6X aircraft, which are earning a reputation of excellent, comfortable and efficient machines. Its journey is just beginning, and we hope it will make a new chapter in the history of French business aviation. Subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with new stories, fast flights on luxury planes, and soft landings to you.